Hi everybody, welcome back to Rachel Bella Crafts. Rachel here, hope you're all well. So um, before I go on, just wanted to remind you all that the Be Summer Inspired collaboration has now started. Um, and today is the 15th and you should be expecting a video up later today from Edith at a scrapbooking with me. And she's bringing you the letter A. So don't forget to go and check out her video later on. Okay, so what am I going to be doing today? Well, I wanted to talk to you about different ways that we can add texture into our journals. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, basically, when you open up a journal, um, yes, we, you know, we, we look for the feel of, of smooth paper, but there's nothing more exciting than running your hands across the page of a journal and feeling the bumps, the, the, the canvases, that the, just the different textures. So we're going to be talking about that over the next few videos. Um, and today I've got a little project that I want us to do and I'm going to show you how we can create not only our own fabric designs, and I say that with inverted commas, um, but also how we can then embellish them, so make them more, so that they add more texture to our journals um i think you're gonna be quite excited when you see what we're doing today so um i just put my lovely postcards out here just to kind of get me into the seasidey mood because i am now going to be going off to the seaside in today's project right so i have got in front of me here um just some uh like really thin craft card stuff you can do this with um <clears throat> sticking onto just some paper that you don't need uh, some scrap paper anything like that so this is just in my scrap paper box um and i picked this up as well because obviously it's, it's quite firm so what i'm going to do i've got some lovely fabric here which i actually bought on my holiday last year when i went to devon um and it's got these lovely cute little camper vans on it so you know me i love a camper van so i'm going to be using that today i have cut a piece of it out um which you can see here and i'm going to be using this to create um our our extra embellished textured piece it'll probably be a pocket actually um but we'll see how it comes out afterwards you might want it to be a journal card so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to really loosely well i'm not going to loosely i'm going to firmly glue it down but i don't need to you know we don't need heaps and heaps of glue just just enough to just kind of keep it in um in position i'm just going to pop that on there now okay smooth all of the, the, the creases out so it's nice and flat perfect okay so i've got a bit of fabric i've got something with a print on it you if you don't have um fabric with a print on don't worry because i'm going to show you now how you can add your own um or create your own fabric so even if you've only got um some blank calico or cotton or any kind of fabrics that's okay too okay so i'm really happy with that so far but I just would like to add a few extra bits and pieces now to kind of further tell the story you know kind of give a bit more um well, just a bit more excitement to the to the journal page so I'm going to add in a word I feel adventure is the appropriate word I'm going to just ink around the edge of that very just quickly a little bit of ink just to kind of make that stand out a little bit um, you don't have to do this of course but I'm going to just pop that down by there Yep, I'm happy with that. So that's fine. I'm going to just add a little bit of glue, keep it in place. Actually, no, I'm going to add a proper amount of glue because I don't want it curling off afterwards. I just thought of that. Right, there we go. So glue that onto your fabric. Glue stick will do perfectly fine. You don't need to be using um, fabric glues for this. I'm just using basic glue stick here, so that'll be perfectly fine. Um, and then I'm going to add this very cute little seagull guy. Now, he is in our Sounds of Summer um, journal kit. I need to just move that over slightly. Um, he's in the ephemera pack, I believe. And because I'm all ahead and I fussy cut beforehand, I can't tell you now which pack I got him in. I'm sure he's in the, the ephemera pack though, and that will just about fit on there. Um, I'm not going to ink that. I'm quite happy with the way that that is there. And I'm just looking for something to lean on my ink, my glue. So I'm just going to glue around him with a bit of glue stick. And then pop him down. Yeah, like so. And I can see you're already thinking, okay, Rachel, you're adding these lovely cute little bits of paper. This is not changing up your fabric. Bear with. And then I've got, finally then, I'm going to pop this lovely um, butterfly. Let me just take that little edge 
Oh, there. I've got the wrong glasses on for fussy cutting here, haven't I? Oh, my goodness gracious me. Make sure we should be doing glasses. And that bit there. Don't worry if there's a little bit of white because it will it will blend in. So that'll be fine. And I'm going to just place that butterfly by there. Yep, I'm happy with that. Obviously, I made this decision before I put the camera on because I didn't want to waste your, your time with me I'm in an R in, so I'm quite happy with that. Just like that, right by there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is cut out. There we go. Love it. I'm really happy with that. Okay, great. So what's next, I hear you say? Right, well, next, I'm going to grab an embossing folder. So this is, um, I don't, all my embossing folders, um, I have bought or obtained uh, from other people. So I bought me the second hand off eBay or um, from Facebook Marketplace. So I couldn't tell you where my embossing folders come from, I'm afraid. Um, but this is a Gemini, so it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to find. But it's like a cross hatch. Um, so it'll give almost like a, a texture of uh, fibres in, in fabric. Okay, but obviously bigger. Um, now, I don't know about you. Is there is there something that you use? all the time in your junk journaling or your crafting that you know full well how to use but every time you go to use it you either do it wrong or you just forget that which way around you do it well that's my achilles heel with um embossing folders because every single time i start embossing you know of a day where i take it out um i always do it the wrong way around <laughs> and end up with the pattern indented rather than imprinted so i'm just feeling a minute which way's round so the bumps need to go on the bottom on the back and then the whole bit needs to go on the top because it's going to push through so I, I'm, I, I'm saying that for my benefit not for yours right i'm just going to go over and emboss this and i will be straight back okay so moment of truth now let's have a little look Ooh, my word look at that how cool does that look and you'd have to be looking pretty hard not to think that that it was all part of um, the original and because we've done it on fabric I mean I know you could do this on paper of course you could but because we've done it on fabric um, you can even see the fibres look that's why I left the frayed bits on and it really gives it a really nice texturised feel I absolutely love this as well I've done, now, I've done a few more beforehand just to kind of show you some different examples because of course not all of you are going to have fabric like this okay I know this is quite unique this but, and I couldn't believe it when I found it but don't be alarmed. You can do this yourself without having patterned fabric that is appropriate for your theme. So here are some I did earlier on. Um, this one is just uh, a, just pretty blue fabric. Obviously, just stuck it onto some. And I've used um, this embossing folder, which has got these lovely uh, floral pieces around the edge. Again, all the embossing folders today are Gemini. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see that on there the texture on there but it's really lovely how it feels and i haven't bossed it the right around as well yes for a change so there's that one there then i did um <clears throat> this one here also again another lovely blue you can see the embossing a bit clearer on that one but again still has got these lovely uh, bits of blue on there. so there's some of my floral fabrics then i found some of this the other day uh it was in the range and I bought it in a pack and it had like all different like bee um, patterns. But I really like that. So I'm going to use that and put something over the front top of that in a minute. Um, this one is the beginning part. I'm going to use this as a belly band inside of the journal. Now what I've done, I had some, um, what's this stuff called? Vellum left over from another one I've just been working on. So I just placed that on the top because uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. And I wanted something on the top to give it a bit of key. So, um, but I really like that. And I like the fact as well that the embossing folder is also putting little hexagons in there. It is hexagons, isn't it? Like, like, um, like a beehive. Uh, which one is it? It's this one here. So I didn't notice that at the time. So that was quite fortuitous. Um, and then when I talk about doing your own designs, um, there are two ways in which you can do that. There are two ways in which you can create your own um, design of fabric as we're going to call it now the first one i have done a couple of shorts on these so do check them out if you want to know how i went about it and saw the process i might try and pop them on at the end for you to see um but they are uh in a different orientation they are the, the image is long so i'll have to put a bit of background on a few um but what i did i printed something off on vellum I'm trying to print out one of the uh summer pages and the blinking thing jammed up in my printer 
And uh, I don't know about you, but I hate wasting vellum because it's not cheap, is it? So I was a bit frustrated and I thought, oh my God, little lady, I know what I'm going to do with that. So what I did, what I did, <laughs> I cut the image out, stuck it onto this, which is just basic cotton, blue cotton. This is like, it isn't a bed sheet, but you could use the bed sheet to, 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 to do this. Um, I, like I said, I got these from the range. Um, and I placed that over the top of the fabric. And then I glued it on, obviously. I've popped it into my embossing machine. And I think it looks pretty cool. Now, I haven't finished these yet. Obviously, I've still got further things I'm going to do to them. And obviously, I'll trim down any bits that haven't gone through properly and just shake them appropriately. But I think that looks amazing. I think you'd have to be really hard pushed to not think that that was part of the fabric. So I think that looks really, really good. Now, obviously, the only reason I cut off these sections here was because it was so badly damaged where it had been crumpled up in the printer. Um, but if you were to put a piece of vellum on that was the same, you know, completely covered your fabric, I think it would look really good. And again, it's got that hexagon, which again, I didn't notice until just now. So there's little hexagons on there. Now, the other way that you can do it is to stick a paper image onto your fabric. Now this one here, I cut this out of the kit um, and I have simply stuck my fabric to a bit of paper and then I cut out uh, my little camper van from um, one of the pages of the kit and I then, I did ink around it with a bit of blue ink but actually on reflection I wish I hadn't now because if I hadn't inked around it I think it would have just blended in nicely the blue into the, you know, the white bits into the blue, whereas I have given it a bit of a hard line now. So think carefully, because that's why I tried it with that. Like I didn't bother with this. And I think that that's a bit of a neater blend there, the way that it kind of, rather than having the hard line. But again, completely your choice. It's entirely up to you. Depends how good you are at fussy cutting, I suppose. Um, and then, yeah, stuck it on and then popped it through the uh, embossing machine and they've come out looking like this. So I hear you ask, what else are we going to do with them now, right? Right, well, bear with and I will... Okay, explain. so I have gone on ahead now and I've prepped all of my um, my little pocket things and I have um, cut them down if they needed trimming down and I have stitched around the edges where I wanted to stitch. So what I'm going to do now is I have got with me here some modelling paste. Now for this you can use... This is just basic modeling paste from Amazon, um, but you can use um, any type of texture paste. You can make your own texture paste. I do have a video showing you how to make texture paste. I'll pop the link in the description box down below if you're not sure. Um, but you can make it up yourself, but if not, you can get this from Amazon or any good um, art and craft shop, okay? Um, so yeah, modeling paste or texture paste is sometimes called. I have also got with me some acrylic paints. Now you can use any paint to add colour to your texture paste, um, but I picked these two up the other day from the range. One is uh, the Gold Emmet, and that's an acrylic, and I've also got Indigo. So I haven't mixed them yet, so it'll be interesting to see how they turn out. Um, I've got with me some, uh, what are these things called again? Palette knives, and I have got um, my little trusty tray for doing my mixing in, okay? I've also got a selection of, um, stencils which i will be working with um and i've also got a bit of scrap paper because whatever you're going to do i recommend that you practice first on a piece of scrap paper because if it doesn't turn out right and you've ruined your fabric pocket then you're going to be disappointed aren't you so we're going to have a quick go on the paper a minute um and then we will um give it a try then on the actual fabric and we'll see how they turn out okay so i've done this first one here now um Use this one there and I've put the white um, stuff on there and I sprayed just the tiniest little bit of this on the, on the top. So hopefully when that dries now it'll have a little bit of a sheen. So I think that looks really nice on there. I'm really pleased with that. Um, now this one here I've done a little bit differently. I've popped some lace onto the top of this one here. A um, little running stitch across there and then a little um, decorative stitch across the bottom of that one there. But what I'm going to do with this one, I've made um, a little fabric ruffle, which I have sprayed the fabric then with some of the um, this, just to give it a little bit of a tingle. I'm not sure if it is sparkly or not, but we'll soon see now. Um, I'm going to stick that on and then I'm also going to stick this label on 
which I might actually do first. I'm going to pop that on there like so. And then I want that to go underneath. And then I'm going to put the word breeze down here. So I think I'm going to start with that because I want that up to go at the bottom. Lovely chipply. Right, so that's stage one. Now for stage two. So what I want to do now is I'm going to put a flower here. Just trying to choose which one. Probably that one there. If you've got a stencil like this that's got other patterns on that you don't want to um, use, then just pop a bit of masking tape or a bit of washi tape over the holes that you don't want your stuff going through. And then you can just peel them off then afterwards. And then it just saves any unnecessary mess or mistakes. Because it can, can have a bit of a life of its own, the stuff, and it does just tend to wander off. I know it does with my hands anyway. There we are. And I'm just going to cover up those holes there because no mind, luck, I'll end up doing them as well. Right, there we are. Now we're ready. Okay. Okay, well, we had a bit of smushing. That was my fault then, because I slid it then as so I was trying to pick it up. Um, that actually doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad at all. Right, now for this one, I'm going to use the white one. with a minute. Now I have some little tubs of um, embossing powder now so I'm going to give this a go. I've got one here open ready that has got gold powder in it and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of my palette knife and I'm going to just gently sprinkle some across and we'll see how that goes okay. Not done this before. I'm trying this for the first time live with you guys. So if it works great. If it doesn't oh At least we've had a go, haven't we? So I'm just going to sprinkle that across there. I'm not overly concerned about it hitting all of it. It is just a taste, you know, a flavour of it kind of thing. Just a little bit more. There. Well... That certainly made that a bit more interesting. So now, because I've popped the gold um, embossing powder into it, the embossing powder didn't react like it normally reacts by kind of like hardening out. Um, but it has dried in with the um, texture paste. And at least now I can see that pattern because I was thinking all white on white. But actually that looks really good. Can you see how they're shining like that? I think that looks brilliant. Oh my gosh, there's so much texture going on on this. I love it. And all of that on a piece of fabric. Right, the next one. Now, another way that you can add to the texture with these is with, um, I'm using a gold acrylic paint marker here now. Um, and these are ideal for just picking out your embossing. Um, because I'm not the best with a paintbrush, I've got to be honest. So to be able to do it with a pen kind of suits me much better, if that makes sense. And it's actually quite subtle because it's not a really, really deep um, colour. It's, it's just subtly there, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just going to go for that bit there, so... 
Yeah, and of course you can. You haven't got to do this in gold. You can do this in all sorts of colours. Um, metallics, non-metallics. If you were doing something with pastels, you could do it with pastel pens. If you've got pastel pens. Um, but I've got a great set of these, and I've got to be honest, I probably don't use them half as much as I should. Um, it's mainly because I probably usually can't get to them. But I did spend some time yesterday cleaning my room, so I now do have a better idea of what I've got in here. Well, I didn't spend some time, I spent the entire day doing it. Um, turned the room out, cleaned it. I've got one corner left now. Um, to sort out and then I'm I'm straight for now anyway but it was just beyond after finishing 100 days and then um, the Boho collaboration obviously I, that pulled out loads of stuff for that and um, none of it had been put away so all my fabrics have been put tidy now there we go Right, so what I'm just thinking now with this, um, when you're done with your pen, and I've picked out there now most of the embossing that I want to be seen. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Crikey, there we are. That looks a lot better now. So there's our little bees there. Now what I just want to do now is just to use some, um, what are these things called, oxide sprays. And with that, then we're just going to add, um, you know, just a little bit more detail. So I was just thinking, I've got this Mermaid Lagoon stuff here. So I thought well, that, that would be quite aqua -y. And I'm going to just take the end out. I don't want to spray it everywhere. I'm just going to take the end out and then just drop a few droplets here and there. I've got my tray underneath just in case because it can be a bit unpredictable where it's going to fall. But now that I've gone over the embossing in the gold, I'm quite happy now that that's going to, um, you know, it, it, it's not going to disappear into the background, so to speak. So well, that one there. And then I thought I might try some of this tarnished brass because my gold one is run out. Um, no, that's not what I'm going to use. No, I will. I'll use this one, I think. And I keep saying into your water more or less, and then I keep forgetting. Do it, Rachel. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, this is the one. I love this one. It's just a, such a warm, it's like a rose gold, isn't it? It's such a warm, rich colour. There we go. Just making that look a little bit more interesting there. I should put a bit of paper under this. Caught all of these, shouldn't I? There we are. Now, I do it for this. I've done it with the end off rather than spraying it. Because when you spray, you just get, like, either... Sometimes it comes in. It can be a bit, like, a bit of a wet clump. And I don't want that. I Because that'll just cover the picture over. Or if I did it from really far away, I'd have just loads of tiny, tiny little droplets everywhere. Whereas what I actually want is... Well, is that I want nice big droplets onto the page and I think that looks absolutely amazing I'm really really pleased with that and for adding texture to a page I think that that's going to do that really nicely so I'm going to just tidy up my desk and then we'll have a last look at what we've done okay After all that, <laughs> I think I've been gone a couple of hours since I was last talking to you. Um, look at this tape in my hands. I have had so much fun. It's unreal. I'm covered in gold, blue, white, yellow. I don't know what other colours, but I've had so much fun. I finished off with what I had left over from the texture paste, using it up on some of my um, scraps. And actually, I was really pleased with how they came out. Um, and I kind of just slowed things down a bit. And I found by leaving the texture paste just a little while to kind of not hardened but kind of dry a bit um it went on better then so um i tried doing some different bits there i've also tried and i know i've shown you this before um put in um glitter on as so after i've 
after you've put it done your thing then just shaking your little glitter dispenser over it um the works i bought this from a pound but it just saves so much mess there's just there's no glitter anywhere on my desk um because i literally was able to just shake it straight onto i hope you can see can you see that glistening there so it's just a little smattering of it over all these bits here but i can tear these down now later and use them uh, and that one as well so as pleased as how they came out oh, i'm still trying that's it right just stick your finger straight in it yeah don't do that right so would you like to see my finished results because all my little pockets are all now done so we started off talking about adding texture talking about adding texture to our journals and um how we can do that and obviously the idea that i gave you today was to embellish and design your own fabric to make your fabric pockets you can use them as belly bands you can use them as journal cards whatever takes your fancy um but for you to take your fabric and make it more okay oh gosh i can see enough through the camera i've my hands are sorry um so i'm going to show you them now one by one let me just get my little journal out of it because i think it's better if you put it on a page it gives you a better idea then doesn't it Perhaps we'll pop them on there. Right, okay. So the first one is, the first one I'm going to show you is our camper van. So obviously, as you saw this earlier on, I'd um, put this, this was paper, went on top of the fabric, went into the embossing machine. And it's really simple and straightforward. I didn't want to overdo this because the camper van, was it for me so i've simply gone round with a nice wavy stitch i've done the waves because obviously it's off to the waves at this beach isn't it and then i've used my um distress inks oxide ink things these and you saw what i did i just splattered that onto um onto the image and i think that's really vibrant now i may stitch down these sides later i haven't decided yet but at the moment i felt that that was enough um but yeah, so I'm really pleased with that. And I think that looks really good. It looks good on a blank page. It looks good on that page. Obviously, perhaps not on the blue on the blue, but definitely on, on the, the other coloured page. I think that would be great. So I'm really pleased with that one. So that's the first one. And that was, like I say, quite similar straightforward. We added a paper motif onto the fabric. And then I just used the um, oxide inks. That's, that is simple. Anybody can do that. You haven't even got to make a mess to do that. Well, I've made a mess, but you didn't have to make a mess. I just made a mess because I like making a mess. Right, so the next one that we did was this one here. Now, this one here was just fabric embossed onto, um, you know, a bit of paper. And then what I did then, I went with my sewing machine. So I've used my sewing machine now to embellish. I'm trying to get this to be in focus so you can see. And there's actually a, a stitch. Look at your sewing machine. See what stitches you've got. If you haven't got stitches on your show, ugh, put my teeth in. If you haven't got stitches on your sewing machine, cross a mouthful. You could slow stitch to get this effect. and But thankfully, I'm not very good at slow stitching and my machine is a bit of a cheat for me. So I've got these little flowery designs that have been done and I've done that all the way around. And then we used the stencils and I've put a nice little kind of fleur de lis kind of pattern in there in the white. And I've put um, some gold, um, not glitter, what was it called? Embossing powder in there. Now, the embossing powder didn't actually do what it normally does on here and I think that's probably because it got caught up in the consistency of the, the mixture paste so it didn't kind of like go hard and you know like it should do but even so I think that looks really cool and I'm really pleased with that and then I just did some sprinkles of oxide ink on that one as well so again that looks fabulous on there that looks fabulous on there I'm really happy with how they've come out actually really happy um okay the next one was this one here now this one we if you remember, I had vellum and I'd not printed it very well. So I put the vellum onto some fabric. It was again, it was the same fabric that I used here, just this plain um, blue cotton. And I embossed it in my big shot. And then I took it to the machine. I found a really cool stitch that actually looks like a bee. Um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Honeycomb. Is that the word? I can't remember what it's called now. You know what I mean. The stuff the honey's in. I think it's called a honeycomb. And not honeycomb even. Honeycomb, there we are. All the way around the outside. I had a complete blank then. Um, and then I took my pen. This one. My acrylic pink pen. 
in gold and I just drew over the top of some of the embossing and that kind of like really drew it out and I just think that looks really cool again obviously I went with my oxide ink then and just did some splashes on it just to kind of really bring that out but again on on the page that's going to look magnificent I'm really pleased with that I think that looks lovely it'd be nice with a nice tall tag in it that one would right so that's that one okay so then I did this one here and I love this one this was um that honeycomb fabric you remember and what I've done with this I've um this was my first uh, stencil I did. It didn't come out great. And then when I dried it, it kind of bubbled a bit, but it's okay. So I've splattered over the top of it. The texture piece is still there, even though it wasn't a fantastic one. They don't all work out. You know, it's a risk you take, isn't it? But um, I've done some jazzy different patterns around the outside with the thing. And then I made a little cluster then to go on the side using some of the ephemera from the kit and the butterfly. I put some oxide ink on the butterfly so that she shimmers and I've stitched her at the middle and then some of the thread I had left over I've put up and used to make little antennas out so can you see a little antennas there and I think that looks absolutely marvellous probably better actually on yeah there's there's your uh what's the word I'm looking for contrast so I think that'll look, that'll look really nice on the page there so I'm very happy with that um then I did the belly band version of that fabric. Um, now, this was a disaster. It was a complete and utter disaster. And I'm going to say disaster, like Craig Revel Horwood would say, um, because I tried to use the blue with a stencil and it all smushed. It all went wrong. But it was my bad because what I actually did, I started drying it while the stencil was still on there. And then I think it was blowing the mixture paste underneath the stencil. And then when I took it off, it was just all a mush. So I thought, right, I can't have this. This is going to ruin my lovely belly band. So what I did is I took my palette knife and I scraped everything off, left the blue underneath because I thought that'll be all right. It's just adding a bit of colour. Looks like I've watercoloured under it now. Um, and then I just went over it again and I did it again in white and I put some glitter in there. So we've used... Um, I didn't use acrylic pen on this one. I used the gilding polish on this one. Slightly different effect. The gold, much more goldy. Uh, put a bit of lace on there. Because, of course, that's vellum under there. And then you've got fabric underneath. And then I just popped a little flower in there. I think that makes a really pretty belly band. And it's just something different, isn't it? You can pop that onto a kit page look. And I just think that looks really cute. So I'm super, super pleased with that as well. And then last but not least, this was the biggest disaster of all. This was my second disaster because you see they don't all go right. So that's why I'm telling you now and I fix them. This one here, I love this one. This is my favourite one. This one here, I did this flower pattern on the fabric the first time and I smushed it. It was completely my fault. I, I don't know what I did. I smudged it, picking it up. Um, and then I tried to do some with the like the, the dots, the stencil dots. Um, and I did too many because obviously I didn't cover up all of the holes um, and they weren't great. So I went over them with gold, the gold gilt polish. Um, I covered over this bit here because I put too much there. So I put a bit of extra embossed paper in there. I put this beautiful little flower on the top here to cover up some of the extra dots at the top because they were just too many. You know, I'm happy with the amount that's on there. I only wanted a few speckled on the fabric, but uh, it was just too much up here and too much for there. So I just added on this flower with this little gem I took the bead out of the flower and I stitched across it because the flower looked really plain and boring on there. Um, so I just put my sewing machine across like that and then I stuck the gem back on the top. Um, I did a bit of stitching in the middle here just to add a bit extra in. And I then, used, when I was using my leftovers on this paper here, I cut that one out then off that stencil. It's the same flower, but I just did it better the second time. And I just stuck it on the top and I think it looks great i'm really pleased with it and then i also took a load of uh thread and i've just ruffled that up and stitched up that there so that's like really it's just really tactile it's there's just loads of texture going on we've got the lace we've got the embossed fabric which i know you can't quite see because the, the pattern the pattern is oh, the fabric is patterned what's the matter i can't my words out um 
but I can see it and I can feel it. It feels amazing. And then we've got some more embossed paper on the top. We've got our ruffle here, which has got texture paste on it. So again, there's more texture, we've got our flower, and then we've got our lovely texture paste flower there with then our ruffly bit of um, these bits, what are they called? Threads. So I'm just super, super pleased with that. And I think it looks amazing. I think if I opened that up and it was in a journal, I'd be like, oh my gosh, wow, that looks brilliant. So not wanting to toot my own horn or anything, but I just think it looks really good. Really good. And that can go either way. Perhaps we'll put that like that. Oh no, I've got some pages next to each other. But there we go. I'm really happy with the outcome. So I hope I managed to like zhush, condense this video down a bit so it's not like really long and boring. I will try and edit it so it's a bit more punchy and to the point. Um but yeah, I'm really, really pleased. So I hope you've enjoyed joining me today. I'm so pleased that it all worked out because it was a risk. Um, but I'm just really chuffed and I'm really pleased with the final results. So please do have a go. And um, I will be back in my next video. Hopefully, what day is it today? Oh, it's only Tuesday. Yes, I'll be back in my next video with more ideas on how to add texture to your journals. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to check out Edith tonight on Scrapbook Game with me um, with her collaboration video. And I will see you all very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.